Hi guys. Hello. What's going on, everyone? It's the podcast. Yeah, it's the podcast yeah. for the day. I hope you guys uh, enjoyed it. Are starting a cult. It's Grand Up Jake. Mitch is here. He's in the room. Everything's back to normal. Yeah, no, it is. It's back to normal. We're here. I'm I'm glad we're back. We got a new episode. Um, we're kind of sticking to the roots, I guess, of the show. We're going with like a theory ish thing yeah. going on. I just got a waft of Mitch's monster. Did it like that give is, you energy or no? It did. Actually, liquid Adderall. liquid Adderall, he says. Oh. I have not smelled that in a long time. This still smells like just straight up fuel. <laughs> it just smells like fuel. <laughs> like, I'll clean your fucking car with this shit. Oh, man. Uh, how you guys been? I know you can't really respond, but I hope you're responding to yourselves for us. Oh, I thought you were talking to me. I mean, I know how you've been. I've, been, I, I've seen you for a while. You no, know? you're right. It's good. We're back, you know. just thought you were being... Consider it, you know. I mean, no. <laughs> no God, come no. on, Jake. I expect too much. What do you think I am? Um, but we're back, and we uh, have a doozy. It's This is going to be a very interesting episode today because it there's really no source material for us to discuss. Yeah, this is a rare episode where I don't have anything typed up. Yeah. This I don't is, have anything. This is more of a conversation that we're going to have and kind of come to terms with what's been going on on the interweb the internet so if you haven't been able to tell by the title today we're discussing the dead internet theory um for those of you wondering what that is i'll give you a quick little synopsis of what that means yeah um so people that state that this theory is true are of the belief that the internet that we grew up with and we came to know um died for lack of a better term sometime around 2016 to 17 yeah and since then it has been replaced by mass market production meaning everything is controlled um what you see what you're allowed to access is controlled um as well as a lot of accounts that were old and possibly inactive were scrubbed and replaced with bots that interact with us on the internet as human, um, but they're just AI systems or dead accounts that are doing bidding of something else. Yeah. Um, so AIs are essentially becoming sentient in a way online. Yeah. In what they can do, they can make decisions for themselves with an objective in mind. Sort of. Yeah. It's it's like um, it's funny. You know, we're just gonna rewind. We're gonna rewind for a minute. Um, I don't know if you guys remember this. But the old days, this was before my my time on the internet. But I, I, you know, you're aware of it because you hear about it. But like the old days with like the instant messenger, you know. Yeah, AIM or AIM. I don't know what people say. Yeah, and I actually didn't know this, but apparently there were like chat bots that, if no one was available, you could have like a conversation with just like a computer generated program that would, you know ask you questions about what are your interests, and then they would discuss it on a very base level. You Dude, know? I feel like I do remember that happening as a kid. Like, it was in... I was so young, we were in the playroom. Like, we had a mm-hmm. room called the playroom. There was a computer in there. We were just like, oh, my God, you can type in, like, questions, and the computer will answer it. Yeah, it, so... But not, like, in a Google way. It's like, we're just talking here. So the, the idea is that something along those lines, uh, obviously that's a little bit better equipped for today, um, operates on a lot of different sites, and especially, like, the big sites, you know, like social media sites, um things that are like comments on news sites stuff of that nature news sites themselves sometimes yeah i mean that that is something to be talked about so why don't we go back a little bit and discuss the earliest days of the internet i just want to go on record saying when you first uh like suggested this topic mm-hmm. i still hadn't looked it up for like a couple days afterwards and uh i just assumed it was like we were going to just talk about some websites that weren't getting traffic anymore or some shit. No. <laughs> or like just something that's like, oh, I don't pay attention to that. But yeah, this is way more interesting. And the, the thing with this theory is everybody that is active on the internet has this thought at one point in time. Um, whether it's something you're interacting with or you're reading comments or doing something, I, I think a lot of people, even without knowing what they are intending to say, feel that some of these things are made up intentionally or 
you read a comment and your brain goes, there's no way somebody actually said that. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. that has to be something fake and like cheap. Like, this sound, like, it's been around us so much, and, like, we can recognize it to the point where it's like, this sounds like a bot. Like, the way this is written is from a robot. I, like, just know. Yeah, exactly. You know, it's weird. So, now, again, go, going back, um, this, again, this is, well, this is before we were born. Um, but in the heyday, the earliest days of the internet, it was essentially a place where you could create a website um, if you had the capability to do that, and it would act similar to a forum that we have today. Yeah. And it could be ranging from any sort of interest and hobby, and people would respond, and it was this new information pool that you could utilize. Yeah. It was like 83, 84, something like that. Something. Something like that, that it became like semi yeah, obtainable. Like obtainable ish. Yeah. Um. Then through the '90s and up until about the early 2000s, it operated the same. Things got better. Things ran smoother. Um. A little bit easier to navigate. Yeah. But it's still kind of a learning curve with like certain things like hacking and all that. The 2000s, like in the year 2000s, so many crazy fucking things happen. Yeah. Like people getting used to online banking, they just like bought into it. So many people just lost money. I think Wall Street got hacked. Mm-hmm. nuts and it it's wild but that was the internet it was essentially it, you you're gonna hear this comparison a lot if you try to read up about the dead internet theory in these times for about 20 years of its existence the internet was the digital wild west um there was no authority there was no regulation minus the very few people that had the capability to hack it was all but anonymous in every way, shape, and form. Pretty much, yeah. And it was just this pool of whatever you wanted to find was available, okay? It was there for the taking. Yeah. Then, you know, the mid to late 2000s, so I'm talking 2008, 2009, things started to shift. It got really, they really honed in on user-friendliness, I would say, Um and again, I this was still I was, you know, we had access to it, but I, I wasn't using it because it wasn't something I was super familiar with. Um, I would use the home computer to play computer games. You yeah, know? do addictinggames.com. Right, like that was always the shit. Um, so you'd play computer games and stuff like that. Um, it wasn't really until a little bit later for me personally that I really got into using the internet. Yeah. Um. Were you a MySpace kid, or did you just go on Facebook? No, I never had a MySpace. Me either. Me either. I feel um, like I missed out, but not yeah, really. Yeah, I don't know. I feel like maybe a little bit, but no one talks about it anymore, so it couldn't have been that great. Yeah, there's just a bunch of nostalgia in the emo community. Yeah, my thought is if MySpace was that great, someone would try to recreate it, you know? Yeah. Um, But so this was still before the dead internet. So let's talk about... The transition, and then we'll kind of dip back and forth between uh, the old internet and the new internet, we'll call it, you know? All right. Um, so, around 2016, I would say that's a pretty decent marker. That is when the majority of the world population was internet accessible. I think it was like 4.4 billion users. Yeah. Um, so, obviously, there's still people that have never used the internet, Um but I would say mid-2010s is when that number really spiked and things got perfected. So YouTube algorithms, um, banking, social media, everything was really honed in and able to be used by almost anybody. Yeah. Um, and then this is the dawn of where the dead internet comes from. And there are some weird, weird little things that happen, but they can be explained. Okay, so, for example, if you were to go on Google, which is, I mean, I'm just going to assume, I don't have this information in front of me, but I'm going to assume that Google is the world's largest search engine. Yeah, it started with, like, two dudes in a garage, like most enormous fucking companies. Yeah. And it just became what it is. So, if you go on Google, let's say you're trying to find something about... mm, a flat tire. You're trying, not the beer, 
You're trying to figure out... That's a fat tire. Oh, yeah, sorry. My bad. I added the L. It's okay. Um, You're looking up information about a flat tire. You think you might have a flat. You don't really know a lot about cars. You want to look up some stuff and see what people say. Yeah, you want to make a fat tire. So nowadays, what you're going to find is you're going to search it, and chances are the first three to seven results you get are going to be ads for new tires, tire repair kits, or handbooks on how to fix cars. Um, they might be semi-disguised as something you're looking for, but in the tiny, tiny little print, it's going to say ad. Okay? Yep. Then you're going to scroll down a little bit, and you're probably going to see some results, some that might be what you want, some that are nothing close to what you want. A lot of them on YouTube. Yeah. And then you're going to hit the bottom of the page, and what you're going to see is Google page results, and it'll say one of, if you Google something. 476,842. Yeah. If you Google something as simple as a flat tire, yeah, you'll probably get a shit ton of results. Now, this is where it gets interesting. Google gets to, and I don't say gets to as in they're manipulating. I'm saying the way it works is the ones that relate closest to what you said and have the highest of volume overall are going to be the first result. So you might skim through a couple of pages, but what, and I didn't notice this, but there's a lot of things that this actually worked for when I tried it. The Google page results might say that there's 300 pages of results for you, but once you get past page three or four, it's out of results. There's no more to show you. Really? And the reason for this, at least the technical reason that we I was able to find is that it searches for everything related to what you're saying. So if it's not a very specific thing, there's going to be thousands of results, right? Yeah. But a lot of those sites might be old or dead or have zero to, to very minimal traffic. What I thought we were talking about, just no traffic at all. Right. So Google might think that those are not going to have any answers you look for because nobody, no users are currently active on these sites. So why would we show them to you? Right? That's understandable. But Yeah, sort of. It's kind of like you, to get this job, you need experience. It's like, well, how do I get experience without the job? It's kind of like that, but for these fucking websites. A little bit. You know? And the, the thing with the dead internet theory, to me where it has some merit, is back in the day, in the earlier stages of Google, uh, th this might even be when Ask Jeeves was the go-to I miss Ask Jeeves so much. Um, but Jeeves. back then... It could you would search through all those results. Now you would have to sift through if you really sat there and went through each link that it showed you, you'd be there for hours sitting sifting through absolute shit that's completely unrelated to what you want. Kind of like Bing now? A little bit. Yeah. yeah a little bit. The shade on Bing. Um but the internet has become so fast paced and so overused and touched by everybody in the world, mostly everybody, obviously. That it it makes sense to shorten it and make it easier to navigate. But if you're to read into the dead internet theory, it's that this is done intentionally in order to manipulate the information we're allowed to receive on the internet. Yeah, to push certain things by having traffic go through the pages that are not real people. Right. So... And it's interesting because, actually, I, I ran a little bit of a test the other day, and I searched for Amazon on Google. Obviously, you could have just went to the website. You know, everybody knows the site. Yeah. But I took the extra step. I went to Google, and I Googled Amazon. And the first thing that pops up is an ad for Amazon. And when I clicked on that ad, it took me to a site that was not Amazon. It was a site that looked similar to Amazon. Chances are it was a scam that wanted you to put in your login information. Insane. Because it did. It looked like Amazon, but very outdated, if that makes any sense. You no, know? yeah, I feel that. Um, and then, you know, you scroll and you find the real site. Um, so the dead internet theory plays into websites in that way. Um, I don't know, Jake, what are, what are, do you have any experience of this where you think, Maybe when you were younger, it was a little bit more informative, or you feel the opposite of that. I don't know. Honestly, when I was like younger with the internet, it was more just like, 
oh, we're going to play some games. Like, I wasn't really, like, searching for answers, if that makes any sense. But whenever I would need to do that, I would just, like, go to Ask Jeeves. And honestly, my memory stops at how fucking delighted I was to see Jeeves again. Yeah. So, honestly, I'm not very uh, helpful on this point. But it, it does make sense. Like, the natural progression of how the Internet's been going since I've needed to actually use it for information. Yeah, I could totally believe that. Yeah, no, I you know? and, and that's the way I feel is that at least this portion of the theory, I don't particularly buy because I think, like I said, it's been streamlined. They're trying to make it more accessible and easy to use. Um, but there, there was a lot of merit with those old forums. I don't know. And I have a, a personal example of this. I had a really weird issue with the, my car, where the electrical like outlets i guess or the whole electrical system would not operate yeah it would it, i don't know if shorting out is the right fucking term it isn't that but like everything would fuck up if we turned left and we were moving yeah and all the lights would come on the windshield wipers would go it wouldn't show us how much gas was in there no like yeah, our, our speedometer didn't work we were just like all right well we'll just wait for this to stop yeah. And, and it would after like 20 minutes. And the car would work fine. It would start. You could turn it off and restart it. It would be fine. It just wouldn't. The electricity wouldn't work. And it was a push start. How fucking weird is that? So I spent a lot of time trying to look it up on the internet because I, you know, I brought it into a couple different shops and stuff and nobody could figure it out. And believe it or not, I found a forum that was dated in 2007. And the exact problem I had with the exact car that I had just a different year was happening. And this guy explained everything that he figured out about it. Okay. Okay. Pretty cool. And that was, it was really exciting because. How many pages did you have to sift through to get to that though? Days. Days of sifting. (laughs) Days. I mean, I was reading every, I was reading manuals. I was reading fucking everything I could. And. It was the simplest little detail that he figured out. Um, and it, it really kind of made this connection to me because since I don't have the experience of the old forum days of the internet, you know, where you read things and, holy shit, this is crazy. And you want to find a conspiracy forum, you got to dig for a long time and then you find some weird shit. Yeah. Um, th- this kind of gave me that feeling of this was what it used to be. Just a no-name website with a question and a bunch of people answering. And you might get a good answer, you might get a shit answer. Yeah. It just depends. I feel like a good example of that era of the internet, it was like Omegle. Remember that? Wasn't that just the web, the the campsite? Yeah, campsite. You just like get paired with some random person, just start talking to them either through chat or through video. And you're just like, hey. I mean, most of these dudes like jerking off and stuff. but like, Yeah, what was the deal with that? I don't know. See, it was Wild West. It's the same. You know, right back in the day. Agreed. It was it was strange. Um, but now we will shift into something that's a little bit more tangible, I think, for us. And that would be the flooding of bots on the internet. Yeah. Okay. It's said to be between 40 and 60%, somewhere in there. Yeah. Of the users on the internet are not real people. No. And I don't want you to think that all of these people are robots or computer a lot of it, at least what I was able to gather, a lot of people, um, apparently it's not uncommon for new sites that have a little bit of money to throw around to pay uh, click farmers in other countries. So it would essentially be an office building full of people that may or may not be trying to scam you in other countries. Yeah. And you would throw them some money to generate traffic on your site. So, you know, people can manipulate their IP addresses and things like that. I, I'm not quite certain how all that operates. Dude, with the early, like, iterations of those things, like, all right, yeah, say a company wants to put up an ad on, like, a website or, like, in some certain algorithm or something, and they're just like, all right, yeah, we'll give you, like, a penny per click. Like, the first guys to figure out the click farming, they made a fucking killing. And then they, and they got caught and fucking a bunch of laws were made and now. It still, it still happens, but it's uh, there, cause you I, know over there in other countries. As far I mean, I don't know any like big tech laws, but I, to me, there's nothing illegal about it. You're just generating traffic, and whether you pay for it or not is irrelevant. You know, so you're you're physically playing the theoretical algorithm. 
yeah, so a lot of these people could be bots. And I think an excellent example of this and something that a lot of people can touch would be any sort of sharing platform. So the big ones would be Facebook um, and YouTube. Those are probably the most accessible. And like Twitter, I'd say. Yeah, Twitter. Twitter not... is the where I see the most like copy pasted things, and like just accounts that you're like, this looks suspicious, and like you've seen an exact tweet that they tweet somewhere else. Yeah, and then you see it like four other times exactly. Yeah, and Twitter actually touching on that for a minute. Um, I know, I I don't know the most recent information, but I, we all know that Elon Musk put in a bid to buy it, and it was granted. And then part of the deal was that Twitter, before handing over the proverbial keys to the kingdom, would scrub all of the bot accounts and give them a number of who was active and who was not. And when they weren't providing that information, he backed out of the deal. So he no longer is buying Twitter as far as the last night. Really? Yeah, that was a couple weeks ago I read that. I don't know if things changed. Um but because of that, he was sort of trying to strong arm his way out of it. And I don't know if it's in you know litigation or something right now, but that, that was a big bone of contention for the purchase was the bots. Yeah. Um, well, I could see where Twitter would like want to not do that because it would fuck up the entire algorithm that they've worked so many years to fucking perfect. Yeah. And it wouldn't be what people want it to be right now. No, it, you know, it, really it wouldn't continue to be Twitter. It would be something completely different. Yeah, that, that's a fair point. Because, I mean, it, it would alter how everything is viewed and seen and what gets popular. Everything would change on Twitter. Yeah. Um, so for those of you that use Facebook, for those of you that use YouTube, I'm going to use YouTube because that's what I'm most active on. Mm -hmm. um, if you find a video, and I'm not talking about one of these niche videos that you really enjoy and might not get millions of views. If you find a video that has over 5 million views, if you start reading through the comments, a lot of them are exactly the same. And a lot of times, the top maybe 100 comments, in those 100 comments, 30 of them will be exactly the same with like a single word changed. Yeah. So you might not think anything of it. You're like, oh, everyone feels the exact same way. And then sometimes with like the purposeful misspellings or something to be like, oh, it's just a person typing. Yeah, it's oh, like, it's no. a mistake. Sorry about that. Oh, my bad. Um, that's how all of that operates. And when you really start to sit down and think about it, why would a platform like that, if somebody commented, that's so amazing, I love this, why would nine other people need to comment that exact same thing? And why would those other nine comments be just as popular as the other ones? You know? Yeah. Yeah. It's an interesting thought. And you see a lot of this on, I'm also, you know, we know I also utilize Reddit. Um, you see a lot of what I perceive to be bot activity on Reddit where something will be posted and it, it gives you a, a time. I don't know how exact it is, probably within a couple of minutes. Um, but it'll, for example, it'll be 7.30 a.m. I just got up. I'm getting ready to leave. I haven't even brushed my teeth yet. And I'm on my phone. I'm like, I got a couple minutes. Let me, let me see what's going on on Reddit. And something will be posted in a page that isn't incredibly active, but also isn't dead. You know, maybe yeah. 100,000 users and... 50,000 of them are active every month or so. And something will be posted 10 minutes ago. And there's already 25,000 comments on it. It's like, that's that's not reasonable. No, it's not. And I understand there's different time zones. People have different schedules. But the sheer odds of something like that occurring is fucking insane. You mean to tell me that a stadium's worth of people all saw the same post at the same exact time and decided to comment on it. Yeah. I mean, within 10 minutes, there's a post that's already completely active. Completely active. I mean, it kind of makes you wonder how legitimate those things that, like, I'm sure everyone has gotten them at one point or another. It's like, buy fucking 900 likes for mm -hmm. $17 or something like that. It's yep. like... Use this code at this fucking strange link that you can't see before you click it. I was just going to say that. For those of you out there that have 
any sort of a business account or something of that nature. Um, I mean, you know, we have the Instagram, so we we see those on on occasion. Yeah, I'm pre- I'm pretty sure every post, almost every post, damn near that I've posted on uh, Instagram, the first comment within five seconds of me posting it is promote it on this. Yeah, yeah, no, it is. every fucking time. And we'll sometimes we'll get messages that say something really strange, and it's from like a weird name. Grow your brand. Yeah. My name is Brandy. Help to grow your brand. Send us 50 US dollars and we'll give you 1 million followers. And it really makes you think because how easy is that to do? You know what I mean? How easy is it to grow your social media brand by just spending a little bit of cash, you know? Yeah. And honestly, I'm too afraid to try it because I'm scared of, uh, you know, malware. And all that yeah. And it's, viruses and things. But um, And to me, I mean, I don't yeah, care I don't because... I mean, let's face it. We do this for the fun of it. So to yeah, you me, can follow us or not. I mean, it's fine. Yeah, to me, the idea of paying for something that really means nothing—it doesn't matter. I would rather have ten followers that are active and attentive and want to know what we're doing and like how we are than like ten thousand numbers on a screen that we bought. Exactly. It, it <laughs> no one gives a shit about it us. It doesn't you know? mean anything. So bots are incredibly realistic. We know that they exist. We don't know the magnitude. We have ideas, but we do not know. Yeah. Um, well, I mean, we it sort of, I don't know if this even relates to like bots specifically, but we've all known that uh, like phones listen to us in our conversations and that kind of thing. And mm. like they advertise based on those things. Sometimes they can like hear if you cough and they'll like give you an ad for Mucinex. Yeah. Like you might it's need some nuts. Claritin. But, um, dude, we did that experiment. We were just like, all right, because we were talking about this. This was like years ago. Yeah. It was like, all right, we'll all just like talk about the same thing, like say it every now and again, just casually. And it, I think it was Gatorade yep. or something. And then within an hour of all of us leaving your house, we all were just texting screenshots of Gatorade ads. Yeah. It happened almost immediately. Yeah. And it, I don't necessarily think that the internet was reprogrammed or reset into something different. I just think they that companies and websites and people with money realize the potential they had when it comes to the usage of bots, and yeah. it's just become this cesspool of fucking bots. Well, it's because the way that you like you were saying, like with the search engine, it's like the things with the most fucking traffic and like the things that people click on the most are going to come up first. So in a way, like bots are just a means to an end. Like the numbers don't necessarily matter. It's just that you're at the top of the search page. No, exactly. And that's the business model. And I want you Not to, model, but you know what I mean. I want you guys out there, in a nutshell, I mean, I know I said I'd keep it short and sweet. That is the theory in itself. I just kind of explained a little bit deeper into what the two sections yeah. are. Basically, the internet's like half not people. Yeah. Um, but I want you guys to think of a time or something relating to this where you might think hey things have changed because i i have an example that i i'm going to share with you guys um so jake i want you to take a minute and think about this i will be thinking um so we got mitch in the room uh and i only mentioned that because he can corroborate this back in the day and i'm talking like 2014 when i really started getting interested in youtube videos because i never paid attention to the potential that youtube had you know You'd see certain things, but that's funny. But then you eventually start watching it. You're like, there's some really cool shit on here. Yeah, very unique. And we used to watch um, a lot of conspiracy videos. Lots of them. Lots and lots and lots of them. And at this time, like, you know, you'd look something up. Hell, sometimes you could look something up as generic as conspiracy theories and just see what comes up. And there would be hundreds of different channels hundreds of different videos all with different things specifications and we'd watch one we'd find one that we thought you know looked intriguing um we'd tech it out we fucking loved it it was great we would watch them for hours they would keep sending us to different pages different people but they're all in the same vein you know yeah and i mean we would just get lost was like, this in the era of autoplay yeah there, it was no i don't think it was this okay. was when when it was done, it would just suggest you stuff. Because I remember, kind of yeah, I remember specifically, like not what age I was or anything, but I remember the one day I noticed. So it's like, oh, they just like keep playing. Yeah, like, there's like, still this more is of this? nuts. So we used to watch those. And 
what would happen is we actually found quite a few channels that we love. And most of them are kind of dead or quiet now, but there's still a few that remain a little bit active. But back then, we could watch for, let's say, four hours. We could watch different videos, bunch of different videos, dozens of different channels, and it would all be unique yet connected to what we wanted. And it was almost as if the algorithm was perfect. They knew what you wanted based on what you watched. Yeah. And nowadays... Let's fast forward a little bit. You do something similar, it's nowhere near as incredible as it was back then. No, it's it's always usually the same top five things. And if you're looking up stuff like we look up, like, oh, we cursed things, fucking conspiracy theories, all that kind of thing, it's usually like a, a compilation video with a host. Yeah. And it's like super cheesy, and they don't really give you much information, but like they're from huge companies on YouTube. Right. So, a good example of this, and I'm going to put in a little plug here that I don't, I mean, I don't think he's going to give a fuck. I like, I didn't know this existed, but I really enjoy uh, stealth camping. Yeah. Okay. It's really interesting. It's a lot of fun to watch. And essentially, if, if you don't know what it is, you camp in places where it might not technically be allowed to camp but you do it in a secretive way so you know you bring a tent or you bring this you sleep in your car you do different shit you go camping in different areas yeah just like oh behind a billboard or like in the woods between a golf course and a road it's like sometimes you need to just hunker down you know hey hey, that's his name hunker down um so steve wallace is the guy that i love i just think he's like a peach i think he's adorable he's so cool he is growing on me he is a a goof he's just a goof he's so entertaining and he's fun and i i mean i've been watching his videos for the better part of a year now um he posts every i think it's every friday or every thursday or something yeah and i watch them all because they're they're just so fun to me and i like him He's got his little traditions. It just pulls you in. And it dawned on me a couple of weeks ago, and this is what really sparked my interest in the dead internet theory. It spawned this idea of, I watch this guy's videos religiously every week, and never once have I been suggested someone that does something remotely similar. No. Ever. Now, my recommendations will always be him. He's always there. He's always around. Anytime this new video comes out, they're shoving it down my throat. Watch it, watch it, watch it. It's like, I know it's there. I know what day they come out. I'm going to watch it. Don't worry. And never once have I gotten an ad for another page. So I decided to take a little journey, and I started looking up stealth camping just as a generic term. And obviously, he was the first one to come up. Yeah, with. no, he's, he's the best guy. But there's quite a few pages that may or may not be copycats of him. I'm not sure who was the, the OG stealth camper on YouTube. I don't know that. But there's a lot of other people that do things similar and might not call it the specific title of stealth camping. But I would never got recommended those ever in my life. So I started watching some of them, and I found another channel. And I didn't particularly care for it as much. You know, I'm a Steve guy. That That's my guy. Yeah, Steve for life. Um, But I started watching it, and... I let it roll a little bit while I was doing something on my phone, and then I was in the kitchen. And I let it roll for maybe two, three videos. And it's been about two weeks, and I still haven't been recommended anything other than Steve. Anything other than that. It knows, dude. It knows your your taste. It And it does. And I think that that can be good. But back to you know the, the point, I guess, I'm bringing up of this story is that back in the day... YouTube used to throw everything at you. It would th- You could watch a video with a million subscribers on that channel. And if you liked it and kept watching, it would start popping up other things. Eventually, you might get to a channel that has five subscribers and has a couple of videos, but YouTube would be like, okay, this is what their video is. They're watching this. They might enjoy this. Let's connect the two. And I feel that nowadays it doesn't work like that, at least for me. Yeah, I mean, honestly, I've kind of noticed that too in like the uh, in the algorithm of YouTube specifically. I uh, went so long without subscribing to certain things that I would watch, like pretty much every fucking day. Mm-hmm. But their videos would always be there. It's like it's bad for the YouTuber and their b- business, I guess, uh, themselves because like the the algorithm is so good that there's no need to subscribe 
or like like anything and a lot of their revenue comes from that it's just like here this is what you want i know so i don't know it's weird it's weird it is and it it's a little disheartening to me because as somebody that i i just like to learn i i like to read about things or watch things that I might never do in my entire life, but sometimes it just is what I want to hear about. Yeah, it's just talking points, you know, just you want to grow your brain. For example, today I was watching a video about the mathematical probabilities of some riddle, and I sat there for 20 minutes and watched him explain the entire thing. I I have no interest in math. I have no interest in riddles, and both of those things piqued my interest at that time. Sometimes you just need your mind blown. And... It was, and it's funny because I follow that page, so that was the only reason it was suggested to me. But there's not this exploration feel to the internet anymore. It's yeah. very, it's very spoon fed. Yeah, it's very driven in the fact of I'm here to go to this site and do this, and there's no middleman of hey, why don't you check out this? Why don't you go to this site? Maybe this has what you want. I don't know. Check this one out. It's very strange to me that. And it should work that way because yeah. that's the point of the internet yeah. is to have access to everything. I mean, well, nowadays they're they're like following human nature, and they're not like uh, they're not pandering to the uh, like natural human curiosity anymore. Like like the pure days, they're doing like just our short term fucking attention spans. No, that is you know, true. It's like I I'm looking this up. I'm going to click on the first thing I see. This this does the job. You know, yeah, it's been marketed to shit because it. It really is now this place where it still has all the great qualities that you'd want. You know, you could learn whatever you want to learn. You could read about people's experiences. You could interact yeah. with things. But it you have to seek it out, you know? Yeah. It's not something that you're going to stumble upon, which in a lot of cases can be good because especially people that may or may not know how to operate the Internet very well, it makes it better for them. Yeah. But, but even, like, when it comes to non, I don't know, like, uh, entertainment sorts of things. Like, if you click on the same news article or, like, news outlets website for an article, like, more than once or twice, you're going to get that at the top of your fucking search bar every single time. Right. And each, I mean, we it's no secret that every, uh, like, journalistic fucking behemoth doesn't... They have leanings, you know, politically. Oh, yeah. And so that's all you're going to be feeding yourself, and that's just bias. That's not journalism. That is so true. So that's a whole different aspect of it. You know, it's like it's shaping the way people think and feel rather than just like, oh, this is entertaining, you know? Yeah, exactly. It's it's about sculpting. And I think now this is where I'm going to kind of dissect the theory in my opinion. All right. So... A lot of people are using this theory as a way to suggest that the powers that be are manipulating what we can see, what we can learn, what we can read, and they're doing it with intent, all right? And as we've discussed, I think, in this episode, I don't feel that way. I think it's really just a business tactic. They're really marketing to us. Well, in a way, it it is exactly that then. It's like, yeah, they're controlling what we see. To, yeah. For them to make money, because what we see is their thing. Well, that's a good point. I guess when you put it in that perspective, that is you a fair point. It's like a glove. It, it like a glove. Like a glove. But the it, it is interesting to note that there are parts of the internet that still operate this way. Um, it's it's hard to find. I mean, you're gonna have to do some research. I personally don't know um, because I'm. Pretty just, I stick to Google, you know? That's, I do, that's my yeah. Thing. Google, I do DuckDuckGo on my fucking laptop. I don't know why. I was just like, oh, let's try it. And I just haven't changed You're like, it. I just don't want to switch I was just like, yeah, it's too much effort to, it'll probably take like four seconds. But I know a lot of genuine conspiracy theorists use Yandex, which is the Russian equivalent of Google. And it supposedly operates in a similar fashion to the heyday of the internet, if you will where it gives you every result regardless of if it matches what you want or not. Okay. And people really like that. And I think, I mean, I think it should be an option. You know, I don't necessarily think it needs to yeah. be Google, but I think it should be more readily available I mean, if for you get, people that want to explore. Yeah. I mean, if you got a question and you're like 
on a time frame, it's like, yeah, just go to Google. The first thing will give you what you need. But if you want to like do some fucking like shooting around, you know, you got some time, you're just like, yeah, what about this? So yeah, it'd be cool to explore on something like Yandex. It would. I mean, those options exist, but we have gotten into a very, um, you know, trying not to get incredibly philosophical or weird here. We've gotten into a very uh, consuming society and lifestyle. Yeah. And like Jake said, they're the internet is being changed to fit that need of consumerism. Yep. And it's doing a damn good job because everything that's on there is ads and, hey, you're on Facebook and you follow this page, so why don't you follow this one? It's the same thing, but it's, you know, two doors over. That's like most of the notifications I get from Facebook are just like, you might like this. It's yeah. like, I don't know about that. And it, it's this... But it gets me to open the app. It's this very strange time where things are so nonchalantly put in our face that you you don't even if you want to avoid it you can't it, it's just impossible you can't back away from it yeah and i find it strange that more people aren't discussing it and i guess because the idea of the dead internet theory sounds so ridiculous when you say it no yeah i told uh, a couple people and they were like <laughs> a lot of people have a lot of time on their hands uh, <laughs> yeah like, yeah Maybe. I don't know. <laughs> Admittedly, it's a bit strange. I'm not saying that I buy into it and think that it's this nefarious doing. I mean, yeah, it's not a end-all, be-all. Like, the internet's dead. It's fake. No one on there is real. It's like, no, there's just, like, a lot of artificial accounts and interactions going on. Yeah, and they're they're not done to be evil. They're done to... To be the meats to an end, as Jake said earlier. The meats? The meats to an end. Arby's. Or the means. Is what we I have the you. meats. I said the meats to an end. Yeah. The meats to a shish kebab. But Lamb. they're there for a specific reason. And there's a lot of people that feel that the internet has changed not for the better, but for a very business-esque reason. Yeah, it's it's a tool. And yeah, it, it the it's like is, it's a tool for the people that made it rather than us, the public. Right. The the original intention of the internet was a rapid way to exchange information that may or may not be necessary yeah. for other people. So like, I'm talking to my buddy in Brazil. This is amazing. Yeah. For example, it would be you know hospitals and tech companies and big businesses that need to communicate to each other quickly via other means than phone calls and information sharing. Hey, I found this. Like, let me send it to you. And it, it still is that at the very base level of the internet, but it has a, such a different scope now that it's completely taken on a life of its own. Yeah. Um, and I want you guys to think about it. The next time you're using the internet, think about it. Like I said earlier, think about any stories that may or may not be from a little couple of years ago, maybe 10 years ago or less, of the internet being much different than it is today. Yeah, I'll pair, uh, compare and contrast. And especially what I want you to think about is the next time you read comments or look at posts on very generic pages, and I mean generic pages where there's millions of followers, read some of those comments and see what they are and try to just... Try to think about if it's a real person saying the same thing yeah. 50 times. Try to connect what. some parallels there. It's interesting. Um, I shared some of mine. Do you have any uh, particular stories or, you know, revelations about weird internet shit that you might or, may or may not connect? Nothing in particular was, like, super weird. It's just so prevalent. They, like, it just happens so fucking often. Like, the exact same like comment and you see it everywhere and, and like your friend is like did you see that and you're like yes i did everyone has because it's just it's the same thing on different accounts i don't know it's weird no, but it i definitely have told this story it may have been like on the patreon or something or may have been on here but i'm gonna tell it again because it was the weirdest fucking thing in the world so i never buy like bottled teas <laughs> or anything i think it was like a pure leaf tea or something like yeah, that yeah yeah yeah. i went into so this was like during covid all right i had a mask on i had a hat on and it, it was just like completely nondescript i paid in cash i just bought these teas right 
paid in cash. So no, you nothing. Me. You said you never bought them, and you buy them. I never buy you them, buy but them. I did this time. I said, buy you buy them. <laughs> you buy them. But no, uh, so yeah, I, I bought these tees, cash, never do it, um, and I walk back out, my fucking face is covered, all right? I literally get into my car, open my phone to like text one of you back, I think, and afterward, I just like go on like Twitter or something or Instagram. I'm like sitting there for a sec, chilling. The first fucking ad I find is for that exact tea that I fucking bought. It knows. It knows. I don't know how it knows. Is it looking at my license plate number and attaching me to my house? And then it's like, all right, this guy's file. Why <laughs> is he likes, doing this? This is what <laughs> this guy likes. He likes pure leaf tea. It's so, and it was like specifically like unsweetened this flavor of tea or something like that and i was like what the fuck it's what weird the fu- what? i, I it, told everyone that day i tell i'm telling you guys run an experiment pick- i never said the word tea no you just <laughs> i it. never said anything it, about the teas it connected it, it felt it in your finger vibrations i guess so it's like the crinkle on the fucking bottle or so i don't know but what I want you guys to try, and if you do this, let us know how it works out for you, because we have our own experience. Think of a product that you have never, maybe not never, but a product that you don't regularly use. It's something you don't keep in the house. It's something you don't even think about on the daily. And put your phone down on the table and just say it out loud two to three times and see if you get an ad for that product. Yeah. Something that it's a completely unrelated. Maybe you have a dog, right? And you're going to start talking about cat food. You're going to get ads for fucking cat food or discount coupons for cat food. Yeah. It happens. And I don't know where it comes from. And it's relatively new. And that, I think, fuels this belief that the internet is being altered because of things like this. Yeah. Or even, like, you don't even have to conduct an experiment. Just next time someone's like, hey, do we have any aspirin? Just check your phone like throughout the next hour and see what fucking ads come up. Aspirin. Aspirin. aspirin ibuprofen. Aspirin. aspirin for the people who don't like ibuprofen. My back hurts. I need pain meds. Back pain. Horrible pain. Pain relief. Soothing back pain. Icy hot. Well, I'm gonna see Chiropractors near I might, you. I might get an ad for some type of medication. Just say the word wheelbarrow. Like, like a bunch need, of times and see it's like you got some fucking ass fucking great deals then you're gonna over get at ads, the tractor. You're going to get supply. ads for like mulch and shit. Like if you have a wheelbarrow, it would pair perfect with this mulch. It's like what kind of seeds does that bird eat? It's like, no, oh, we have some feed over here at PetSmart. You want some bags of seeds? <laughs> you want to try, guys? You want some bags? So it's this theory is, it's, a, it's hard to even call it a theory. It's more of just an idea. Um, that's completely intangible and something that we'll never be able to fully know. Um, and we're uploading this episode to it. Yeah, we are. We're real, though. But it pays... I'll prove it. It pays dividends to think about it because it really will put you in a spot where you sit there and you're like, huh, that is a bit odd. You know, maybe I remember this or maybe it wasn't like this before. I don't know. Yeah. Or certain sites that don't really have a lot of use or make a lot of sense are still active because they're getting traffic, you know? It's it's very interesting. It's a it's a wild thought that I think plays into a lot of different aspects of our day-to-day life yeah. that you probably don't think about regularly. Weird thing, the internet, you know? It really is. Um, all right, so with that, that's essentially the dead internet theory. You guys heard what the theory is. Um, I, you know, a couple examples, like I said, I know mine weren't super great, but they were just little personal things I had to throw out there. Yeah. I mean, I told my couple of stories, but like, like I said, it's just so ingrained in like what I believe the internet to be that I, I don't even like pay any mind to it anymore. It's like, oh yeah, that's not real. Yeah. But I don't even think that out loud. I just kind of like scroll past it. I'm just like, yeah, I'm looking for other shit. <laughs> I don't I'm know. Something, something, something that grabs my attention, but it's never a bot usually. Unless it's an ad. I have fallen prey to that. Oh, yeah. Everyone does. I complimented it's hard uh, one of our friends on his white shoes. What do you know? I'm getting ads for white shoes. And what do you know? I buy them. It works, dude. 20 minutes later. <laughs> like, I'm just like, I'm doing it. This <laughs> I never buy white shoes. This marketing is fucking insane, dude. It works. It was while we were in the studio. It was like we were in the car. I was like, nice shoes. And then I was just sitting on the couch while someone else was tracking. I was like, I'm going to buy these. Buying them right now. You know, so it. it works. You know, I'm a, I'm a statistic. 
it's weird, man. If you're going to take anything away from this episode, the next time you use the internet, just think about it for a second and just really soak in what other people think and what we kind of told you about today and just see if it if you think it fits into what you're noticing, you know? Yeah. That's all you can really do. It's not a bad thing. It's not a good thing. It just is a thing. This is just happening. Yeah. This is the reality. So you don't need to like be upset about it or oh my god, what does this mean? It just it'll it'll work itself out, I assume. Yeah, it's like everything will be fine. It's just, you know, like food for thought and you're just like, Hmm, I did notice that. Right. Look at that. So with that being said, I think that's effectively our episode for the week. I think it is, yeah. That's the dead internet. It's gone. It's dead. It's dead. Yeah. But um, if you're not a patron already, we did one yesterday that I think you guys will enjoy. Um, if you don't want to be a patron, don't worry about it. We have episodes every Friday, so yeah. it's going to be fine. It's you know what's fun? Relaxed. It's going to be cool beans, yeah. you know what I mean. No, it's cool. All the beans are cool. You know what's kind of fun is the, the, the dead internet. It's kind of like uh, Nietzsche's like, God is dead and we, we have killed him. But yeah. the robots killed the internet. Robots killed the killed himself, and we are God. Or... It's it's so many parallels with that old fucking German guy in pain. <laughs> he was in so time. much pain his whole life, all the time. Great mustache, though. But yeah, I think that's the episode, and we are starting a cult. That's great. I'm Jake, and Mitch was in the room. He's drinking water now. Ooh, it's chug a lug, baby. He's playing a word game. I think I saw. I was I was looking at you, motherfucker. Fun, fun. Yeah, but uh, you can follow us on all the shit. We're on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and we're on YouTube. Go like and subscribe there. This is all like very ironic for me to say. Yeah. After this, but uh, yeah, go check it out. Go like and subscribe. Um, and then we got the email. Start a cult at gmail dot com. You can send us all the stuff and everything you want. Um, uh, TikTok. Wasak underscore pod. We got that. And Patreon, there's a link down below for that. We do bi monthly episodes. That we do. That's it. I love you guys. Yeah, I love you also. I'm Jake. That's Grant Mitch is here in bananas. Bananas from me.